All right. I got a new uh, mic stand yesterday. So happy. Or day before, maybe day before. Did I talk about that already? That's, that's how boring it is around here. Hey, I got a new mic stand. <laughs> Chris got a new guitar. I just got a new mic stand. But I was really happy when it arrived and it said made in Germany. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm. it's so almost impossible. But I'm, I'm so going to try not to buy anything made in China as much as I can, just because I'm mad <laughs> that they put us through this. Um, and, uh, and I'm kind of ticked a little bit at, uh, Amazon because they won't say where things are made in their, uh, product description, which is kind of a, a jerky thing to do. I had a light right here. I'm wondering if it's going to help me. Uh, maybe let me turn it up and see if I can turn it up a little bit. Ooh, that's really bright. Let's see if that helps. Maybe with with the I think a little bit helps, right? D A D G B D. Yes, that's double drop D. I actually just wrote a song for a pop artist using double drop D. Uh, and I said it to him when he was trying to figure it out, he was like, he sent me a video and he's like, is this how you played it? <laughs> and I said, nope, not even close. So I had to, I had to show him how I did it. I, I I'm glad that he's trying to learn how to play it. Um, because, uh, often, you know, he wants to be able to play guitar live if he can. So everything I write for him, he wants to try to learn. Uh, let's see, Bruce. Nice, Bruce. Yeah, my son Jack just is graduates uh, in May from USC with his master's in mechanical engineering, and he's been working at uh, NASA at JPL Jet Propulsion Labs in Pasadena for the last three years, uh, paid and everything, uh, part time, about thirty hours a week. Um, and they actually they they should have offered him a job. Now he's moved. He's he took a job at uh, Northrop, um, and so he starts that in July. Um, I think Roger, you worked for Northrop. I think you said TRW or something previous. Oh, I just touched my face. Is uh, is AK here? Who's who's got the list of uh, drinking game rules we have? Anybody have that copy and pasted? I should totally. I can create. <laughs> although I don't know if I can copy and paste um, emojis. What that looks like. But let me let me uh, let me create a text edit file here new document and let's see if i can uh, so once somebody posts that because <laughs> it was in yesterday's i could go grab it from yesterday's chat uh, how old was my son when he i started teaching him guitar uh alex was um i mean i <laughs> if you go to my instagram you can see <laughs> He was already strumming a little ukulele that I had when he was probably 14 months old. He could, at 20 months, he could sit down and play a drum groove on a drum set. Um, so, I mean, did I teach him? No, we homeschooled. So homeschooling, he was around, and I work from home. So we were, the whole family was home all the time. And so he was in my studio all the time watching me do my job. In fact, originally my studio was the, the, the second bedroom of our apartment. Then when Alex was born, there was a crib here and my studio was here. And then when Jack was born, there was a crib here. So I had a crib here and a crib here and a studio here. So I'm do, I was doing what I, not quite what I was doing now. I was mostly writing music for uh, our, my bands at that point. But, uh, you know, I, I would I would work with two cribs sitting there. And then at night, of course, I couldn't do so much work. But uh, uh, but he Alex, I always I always joked that if he could have crawled up inside of me and been me, he would have. He just parrots everything. I've got video of me doing this show at church. We did this like variety show at church every year. And um, I went ahead and uh, he had a like a toy guitar, like a, a little electric guitar. He's probably three and a half years old. Um. I had a little cardboard amp. I made him a little pedal board 
And um, every time I was, you know, working and I play, I hit, and he had little ear plugs in so he wouldn't get his ears blown out because it was a big band. And, but he stood up there the entire, everybody was all worried. Oh, there's no way he's going to be able to stand. He'll get bored after two and a half hours. He won't be able to stand up there for two and a half hours. And hopefully Diane's here because I'm telling the story right now. Uh oh, uh oh, somebody better get Diane. <laughs> but anyway, I would be staying there and I'd hit a pedal and then Alex would hit his pedal. If I adjusted my amp, he'd turn around and adjust his cardboard amp. If I tuned my guitar, he'd start tuning his guitar. I mean, it was like literally that. And by the time he was probably four, he could bang out some basic chords on the guitar. Uh, the hard part for him was the left hand fingering because his hand was small. But the right hand he had from like age one, he could do solid grooves. So that kid is a pretty amazing guitar player and um, really good writer, producer, arranger. Right now he's working for Disney, doing a bunch of acoustic arrangements of all their all the Disney classic songs. And he's actually working for Disney doing it. So, I mean, he's very, very good guitar player. So, uh, yeah, so it just started when I was young. I started when I was nine. I didn't get into it till I was 13. So he was working. By the time he was 13, he was already getting paid to play guitar. It's pretty crazy. Oh, okay. Diane's here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Diane. Um, and then uh, let's see. Um, and my other son, Jack, is our second son. He played bass, but he didn't. He just kind of, he, he was sneaky. Um, he didn't, you know, because his older brother was already really into music and everything. That's tough when your brothers, I, I don't have a brother, but um, I know it's tough when you're, you've got an older brother that's doing stuff that you, maybe you can't do. And uh, you really even, you're like, nah, hands off. I'm not even going to try. I don't even want to bother because I don't want to compete with my brother because I'll, I'll, you know, I'll never win that or whatever, you know? And so, uh, but then Alex and his best friend, Blake and Jack and Jack would go over there Blake, Russell was their best friend, and um, they uh, um, would go in, over to Blake's house and play Legos all day. And they had um, a shed in the back that Blake had a drum set up in his drum kit in. And Alex, they had an amp back there for Alex, and Alex would bring his guitar. And they'd play Legos for like two hours, and then they'd go jam in the, in the box for like two hours. And uh, so what happened was Jack... Jack was kind of feeling left out. He could just sit there and play Legos by himself, but he didn't tell me this. He started playing bass with them. And then I remember they had their first gig and they were playing at this music store and, and Beth and I go and we sit down and Jack is helping them set up. And I'm like, Oh, that's nice of Jack to help him set up. And then Jack sits down with a bass on his lap. And I'm like, wait, what? That was the first I'd heard of it. He didn't want to tell me at all that he'd taken up bass and he still plays bass. Uh, he'll occasionally uh, play for the youth department at church or something like that. So he he likes that. But uh, yeah. Okay. Gary. Okay. Uh, Bannon High School called. You see, Gary got it. Let's see. Touch face. Change guitar. Forget tuning. Third person. Air quotes. Bannon High School called. I think, I think that's, I think that's it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And oh, I can copy. Let me see if I can copy. It's white text. So paste. Oh. Oh, it copied with a black background. <laughs> That'll work. Let me see if I can make it bigger so I can see it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that'll get it started. We'll probably add to that before the end of the month. Egg sandwich. If I eat an egg sandwich, you can touch your face, but probably not going to happen. Don't add that, Gary. <laughs> uh, so Jack, um, yeah, so Jack is an engineer. And uh, like I said, he's worked at JPL. Um, and boy, they should have hired him. In fact, he did get an offer, a really good offer from the company that con subcontracts for JPL because Jack is actually working on Mars stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, and that, he really, really loves working on it um, because he really feels like, and he'll often give tours of JPL and they'll go and look at all the different, you know, uh, the explorers that go out in space and things like that. The and so he really feels like he's part of something that's going to be talked about, you know, 50 years from now. But what they're doing is they're in the process of, I think, maybe this year they're sending up a probe to Mars that's going to go and take soils or, you know, core samples. And um, then they're sending this other probe that's going to go there and mat, meet up with the other, the first probe. And they're going to take those core samples. And I think this is in 2022 or 2024. Uh, maybe 2022, uh, they're going to meet up and they're going to, the core samples are going to go into this probe, uh, 
this bot or whatever, and it's going to launch it into orbit. All those samples are going to get launched into orbit around Mars. And uh, it'll be in like this orb that's about the size of a medicine ball. If I'm not mistaken, it's like a black and white check thing so that um, the thing that Jack is working on goes in 2024. It gets launched up to Mars into orbit around Mars, and it's going to grab that that ball full of core samples out of out of space out of orbit on Mars and bring it back here. <laughs> and I was saying, and this is before the coronavirus thing. I was saying, yeah, you, if, if, if they bring back some, some virus from Mars, <laughs> it's, it's just like, that's our fault. Another, another Straley, another Straley uh, accident. We, we have big accidents. So, um, but now he's not going to, he's unfortunately, he's not going to be able to finish that project, although they've really depended on him a lot because he's, he's done a lot of the design of the arm. He's designed, I think, three different prototypes of the arm uh, for, for, for JPL. So it's pretty cool. Really, really cool stuff. Yeah, Dennis, uh, Dennis is saying uh, he's the older brother and I, um, he's very hands-on and practical guy. And my younger brother went to university and pretty much got a degree in math but has no interest in doing anything with his hands. Yeah, that's, and Jack, and Jack still, you know, Jack, uh, Jack's actually a really good sailor. So he actually is probably, Northrop is right by, is in Redondo Beach. So where he's going to be working. And uh, he taught sailing in Redondo Beach. So he may actually get a sailboat and live on that. That's, that's his plan. So um, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> uh, when you homeschool, like the cool thing about homeschooling with Jack was that once he knew what he wanted to do, he could spend four hours a day doing math and just working ahead and working ahead. And then he went to uh, Pasadena City College, which was cheap for me, uh, help help me out. And then he went to Cal Poly Pomona, which is still pretty cheap. It was only like twenty five hundred a quarter, which is really cheap for a really good engineering school. Um, I mean, the more expensive part was the rent and, and the food and everything he needed in the car. Um, yep. Jack is about 18 months, 21 months younger than Alex. So I'm a, I'm in the middle of two sisters, right? Four years apart from either one. So totally different thing. Um, oh, Apex Legend. I forgot about that. Yeah. If I mentioned that, that I play guitar on Apex Legend, that's for the young kids. And there's no young kids watching. Hey, Max, how's it going? Lance. Yeah. Bring a virus. <laughs> if I, if we bring a virus, if the Straley's bring a virus back from Mars, you have to take a sip of probably some government elixir, no doubt. <clears throat> Um, so what I'm going to do today um, is, uh, let's see, I, I am going to uh, teach you two more patterns, I think. We'll do one and then maybe another. Well, I think we'll do two, two because one is a variation on the one we did yesterday, and this other one's a very simple one, uh, but it's, uh, it's going to use all three fingers. So we'll have P-I-M-A, angular, I think is a, uh, somebody, uh, uh, Pepper sent me the the words that uh, uh, the the thing and it, they, it didn't say it's interesting it didn't say what C was, um, but we're gonna so we're gonna do a, our first pattern that uses a thumb and three fingers so that'll be good and then tomorrow what I'm gonna do is I think we'll just do a review and maybe a play along. Um, I'll just go ahead and go over everything and then we'll play along with it okay. So, and now just just so I know I mean. It's starting to look, you're, you're starting to see, I mean, this, this looked like hieroglyphics a few days ago, but now it's starting to look like, wait a minute, I see the pitches move. I see the baseline go up and down. I know that that's a C chord. And, and a lot of times what I would do is if I saw something like the, the finger picking side there, if I saw something there in music, then I would add up all the notes so that I would have something over here so I could see what chord it was. Cause sometimes you're like, wait, what chord is this? So what I would do is I would, I would go, okay, what notes are here? And I would just kind of push them all over here. Like I did here in advance, or I'd push them all this way and go, okay, here's the chord I need to be able to have my hand on. Uh, so I would actually do that on a lot of classical pieces uh, when it would have a, you know, a finger picking pattern, but it, every time it changed chords. So these are the ones we've done already. We'll go over these. I think we'll review these tomorrow. Well, we're going to go ahead and review yesterday's today because we're going to just we're just going to invert the the index and middle on this one. OK, so we did thumb, index, middle, index, thumb, index, middle, index, thumb, index, middle, index, thumb, index, middle. And that I wish I could have 
it's like an image here while I play. But here's that pattern. So um, without a without a, a chord at all, we can just go thumb first second first. And you notice I'm not resting on the strings. I'm letting everything ring out. Hey, Reed. Angular. Angular is Espanol, right? That's our pattern. So we put a C chord on there. Now let's move the bass down a string. Okay. Now the new one is going to be thumb middle on the first string, index on the second, middle on the first. So same. The fingers are assigned to the same strings. We're just instead of going I M I, we're going to go M I M. With the G7 chord, oops. Yeah, the, the first one, Lance, the one I was doing, P I M I. This one's gonna be P M I M. P M I M. P M. And the P stands for Pulgar. It's Spanish, Italian, I think. Yeah, Gary, I'm going to try to take the rest of the day off. I, I you know, I, for, I didn't even know it was Sunday. I mean, I woke up and I'm like, what day is today? <laughs> no idea. I'm just like all of us. We're all like, what day is this? They're all just running together. And I have been, I'm so thankful that I'm, I'm busy and able to work and still make a living in all this. Um, I really feel bad for the people that aren't able to work right now. And hopefully soon, 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 we'll all be able to get back to work. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. I'm going to be all alone here and you guys are going to be around. You're all going to be busy. Um, but uh, uh, I'm going to try to take today off if I can. I go well, after this, we'll have lunch and I'll go for a long walk. And I don't know what. I mean, I guess I could watch, you know, we've been watching Bosch, uh, <laughs> on, you know, but it's only there's only 10 episodes in this season and they just dropped on Friday. We've already watched five. So we're trying to make it last, but it's just brutal. <laughs> You get an extra 2K to stay at home or just 2K in general. So this is a new pattern. So you can see, here's the, here's the yesterdays. And one of the keys to going fast is just kind of relax. It's hard. Sometimes you get tense and everything freezes up. And this is one of those examples where I can do the P-I-M-A-I, P-I-M-I, faster than I can do the P-M-I-M. Um, it's like the paradiddle thing that I, I can't, I can do the right double, but I can't do the left double as fast. And uh, I probably, what that would tell me, and I would make, this is true. So if you're, if there's like one of these that you can kill and you can play super fast, but you can't do the other ones, well then don't practice that one so much. Go after the other ones and try to get them up, you know, try to raise the floor. Um, that's one of the things, uh, uh, Cheers. Where's my water? I'm going to take a sip of water. I hate water. Sip. Well, that's great that you can, yeah, because I always work from home. So, oh man. Okay, take another sip. Yeah, I almost always work from home. I mean, obviously, if I have to go to the studio, I will. And at church, you know, when I, when church is on, I can play there, but on the weekends, but for the most part, I'm home working um, or practicing. That's what I may do today. I may practice guitar. I mean, if I could retire and I don't ever plan on retiring, I always say I'll retire when the phone stops ringing. And I work for so many composers and artists and um Producers that are so much younger than me, I, my hope is that I'll be able to stay relevant and keep working into my 70s and even potentially into my 80s. I don't know. I don't know what that's going to look like. 
Um, however, uh, if I ever were retired, I think I probably would still be playing guitar every day. I just would be practicing and trying to get things down that I couldn't do last month. I want to get some, you know, so I've got some things I want to work on. Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I know people that if they retired, they would literally die. Uh, the owner of our building in Pasadena that we managed, <laughs> I talked to him last night. I think he's 83 and he he's literally in the office every night till midnight. <laughs> he's like Scrooge. He owns like, I don't know, 80 buildings in LA and maybe 80 in Arizona or something like that. And he's literally Scrooge McDuck. He's counting his money. Or, you know, that's what I imagine. <laughs> so, uh, but he just loves working. He just loves it. So I, I'm like, okay, the, you know, he said, if I ever stopped working, I would literally die the next day. And I believe that. So, um, Yes, it is crazy, isn't it, um, Verdi? So, so what we're going to do is I'm going to re- I'm going to write this out the the new one, and it's going to be this C. It's going to be the triad C E G, and then back down to C, and then B D G, and then back down to B. I didn't put a stem on that one, did I? I'll fix that. Um, but and then also, um, oh, uh, I'll do a, a Discord invite. There, I scan these and send them to the Discord. I may still, I can still put them up on, on the Facebook page, but uh, if you're interested in joining the Discord thing, is it okay if I do a um, invite for that? Because because I'm the only one apparently that can post links. So if you want to go to Discord, which is just another kind of a chat thing, uh, invite people, copy, back to you guys. Yes, Kathy said yes. Okay, she's Kathy's my boss. So if she says yes, then it's yes. Okay, so there's the invite to the Discord um, chat room. And there's they were chatting before I go on air. And they, they ch- chat after I go off on air. And I, I've i actually got, I need to create a secret, like a, a new name and avatar so I can go and spy on them and make sure they're saying nice things about me because you never know. But basically, I'm going to rewrite this right now, but I'm going to invert the top two notes. So this is the second string, and this is the first string. That note there is the C on the second first fret of the second string, and that's the open E string, okay? And here's that C chord that you've played a thousand times. It's uh, X32010. That chord, that C chord that I just typed in in the live chat is this chord. That's what it looks like in music notation. So what I'm doing is I'm I'm teaching you finger picking patterns. This This is our new series. Uh, but at the same time, I'm trying to t- give just give you a slight intro into learning how to read music. Um, and basically, it, it works great for this lesson series because we're only using two chords for the lesson. So read, reading for those two chords, this is actually faster than writing out tab, in my opinion. Um, so, and in the process, you might actually learn how to read music, which I think would be a really cool thing to be able to do. I use it every day. Um, every day I'm working for somebody and they're sending me music. And what I do a lot of times is I have composers. They'll just, I just have them send me the MIDI file, the whole MIDI file for the whole session. Um, I have one composer. It literally will take about four minutes for the session to load because his his template is something like 500 tracks. So it has to load like 500 tracks. And I don't have any of his keyboards or any of that stuff. So it just loads 500 pianos. <laughs> And then, and then there's only MIDI files on maybe, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, maybe a hundred of those tracks. And then what I do is I, I delete all of the tracks. I should, I should film this sometime and show you what I do. I delete all the tracks except the ones he puts my name on. And those are the ones that I turn those into music notation. Cause you can take uh, pretty much any software will allow you to turn MIDI into music notation. Now I may have to edit the MIDI. Um, let's see. Do I need, eh, I'll go ahead and write the chords out. Um, I may have to edit the MIDI or it looks kind of messy. So that may take some time uh, and that could be a bit of a pain. But some composers are really good about the MIDI's really clean and every note looks like an eighth note or whatever. But sometimes if you hold down a, and roll your finger on the keyboard, what that looks like in music notation is just like a bunch of ties and it looks it looks impossible to read. So I sometimes have to go through that and fix that. Okay, so this pattern is C, then E on the first string, then C on the second string, then back to C, I mean E, and then climb up. 
I'm not, my penmanship is not the best. And then back to C. And so I'm basically, these are 16th notes. That's why it has two, ver, two horizontal lines on top. And so in a, a measure of 4-4, four, four, there are 16 16th notes. You could break up the measure into 16ths, and you would need 16 of those. And so the rhythm on this is just super pure and consistent. Dot, dot, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. That's how you would count 16th notes. Okay, so we have, it's going to be P, M, I, M. So here's the C chord. Here's the C chord. You see that? So here's what we had. Let me put these two together and hold it up. Put the pen away. I'll start drawing on stuff. So the bottom right here, this line is what we did yesterday. So you can see the bass notes, the C. Oh, I didn't put down stem. I'll put down stems on those. But the C, E, G, and C down on the bottom are the same. But the top two notes are the same. It's just reverse, you know, different order. So instead of hitting the second string first, you're hitting the first string first. So my point of showing you this is that, wow, they, they look very similar. And you, you can kind of start to see how you could easily read music. Okay, let me put stems on these. And then I'm gonna write the, the uh, so this is the C chord. I'm gonna write the G, the G7 over B, which is that other chord. And that, I'll give you two ways to finger it in case, um, oops, I wrote, it wrong. I wrote it wrong. It's not this note, it's this note, this. In case, um, so you could play it this way. This is how I want you to play it if you can. Or if you want to simplify it, you can play it this way. That's G7 over B. Uh, let's see. Don't forget to like, uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. let's see, DK. What do I mean rock? Did I say rock? <laughs> if I say my penmanship is bad. You guys are making up your own rules. They're going to be like 50 rules. Um, let's see. Uh, software. Um, <clears throat> oh, my comment. Bless you, man. Okay. Pepper, I'm sorry. I missed your comment. I don't look over here. Uh, Tom, if it wasn't for your teaching and these guitarists here in the room, I would be left alone with textbooks. Bless you all. <laughs> well, bless you, Pepper. <laughs> and I do see your messages on, on Facebook. So I do see those and I hear them too. Um, Mitty's Tom. Uh, so, uh, 420. <laughs> okay, Vapo. <laughs> Careful. We don't want to get, we don't want to have this video non, non monetized. Although 420 is irrelevant in California. What's funny though, I remember um, remember I told you that uh, sometimes on the way to church, I, I would put on comedy albums for the kids to just so that it would be fun. Because it was about a 30, 30 minute drive from Pasadena to church. And um, we would listen to Steve Martin. And this was back in the, back when I was in high school, this record, that record came out, the Steve Martin thing. And he jokes about, you know, <laughs> about uh, smoking, you know, getting caught with weed in California. He goes, yeah, you better be careful because that's like a parking ticket. <laughs> so even back in the 70s, they weren't really enforcing that whole thing. Uh, just not a thing, really. Not out here, anyway. Um, okay. And, oh, I just, oh, I, okay. I just wrote the wrong pattern for the G7. I'm going to have to move it down. That's not a glug. I'm talking and writing. That's not easy for me. So let's see if we get this. Okay, so it's the thumb and then the middle index. And we're going to work this one. The next one I think will be pretty easy for you, but it introduces the, the, the ring finger to the mix. Okay, 
and then we'll start, you know, mixing it. But tomorrow, I think I'm just going to do a review where we'll kind of do a play along. And I'll try to do it slow. This is where it's really difficult. I don't know where all of you are, but some of you are making comments like, yeah, this is making sense or I'm getting it. Um, trying to make these. Okay. So I had to go down to the bottom of the staff. And then also Pepper, I mean, uh, Kathy, thank you so much for keeping tabs on questions and directing my eye to them because I'm not looking at the chat as much, especially when I'm doing this. So it's also gonna be the same thing, the P-M-I-M, um, and that just continues. So here, <laughs> okay, here's the lame. Now I probably won't, well, maybe I'll scan this today because I'll have two of them to do. But um, there's the new one. <laughs> you can see where I messed up. Sorry about that. Yeah, it is hook. It is exactly that. It is exactly muscle memory. Um, and that's why you take it slow to start. I'm always trying to go too fast. So I'm one of those teachers that says, slow down, slow down, but then doesn't listen to his own teaching. So let me grab my, my foot pedal here. Okay. So... Um, let's just, I'm just going to stay on the C chord. I'm not going to change the G over B, um, B because, uh, I, I just, we really, really want to concentrate on the right hand. So make a C chord if you can hit that bottom string with, or the, not the bottom string, the fifth string with your thumb. And I'm just using nail. I'm not, you could use your flesh. If you don't have nail, you can use the flesh. I'm not, I'm not with a thumb. I'm not trying to get flesh and nail. With the fingers, I'm trying to get the, the string to go kind of off. Uh, my teacher would do this. I don't know if I can, but like, here's my finger. You don't want the, the string to go like, I uh, can't really see this. You don't want it to go like that. You want it to come off more at an angle if that, see, like this, not straight on like this, because you'll get a click. There'll be, there'll be that moment when the, the string goes off your flesh and onto the nail and then off the nail. So you'll get a little click. It may not be audible at a fast speed, but it'll make up for a nasally sound. So if you turn your finger slightly and go like this and try to hit the string that way, um, then you're hitting the nail and the flesh at the same time, which is why I, I pretty much file this part of my nail down and have a rise on this side of the nail. So as you look at your hand, my hand this way, that should be the nail should be lower here and higher here. Uh, lower here, higher here, lower here, and higher here. Although pinky doesn't matter. Thumb doesn't matter so much. Whatever you can do to get a good nail. That's if you're going to have nails. You don't have to have nails to do finger picking. It's, you're, you know. And and um, so, so again, it's thumb and then index, or sorry, mid, uh, middle on the first string. So I can get that. And then index, middle. And just stay on the C note at the bottom. Yeah, Walter's really good. Is Walter on right now? Can you believe how fast you guys have, we got that. I say we, cause we're a team on this. Just keep doing that slowly. Now, if you're feeling comfortable, move the thumb up to the next string. And some of you, somebody said, can I rest my pinky on the top of the guitar? That's fine. Uh, but in classical music, that would be a no-no. A classical guitar would be a no-no. And then again, C. Fourth string. Third string. And then back to the, the fifth string. And then start the pattern again. Uh, Dennis, I used to bite my nails too when I was in college because I had to grow nails and I didn't have any. And my guitar teacher was telling me I had to grow nails. And I'm like, because oh, I would bite my nails. And I'll tell you, there were times where I would sit there with a nail. It's like, it's like the total definition of temptation. It's like the, it's the, <laughs> it, if I was in the garden uh, of Eden, I would have totally taken a bite of the apple. <laughs> it's just not, it's just not, there's no doubt in my mind that I would have totally done that probably within an hour. <laughs> this is an amazing place. Oh, an apple. <laughs> that would be me. 
I would sit there with the nail in my teeth and I'd be like, oh, I want to bite it so bad. I want to bite it. So, oh, I can't, I can't, I need to practice. And, and I, it would just be bugging me. You know, I'd feel it and I'd be sit there and then finally I would bite it and I'm like, dang it. Now I got to grow it all over again. It just was hilarious. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you guys are learning stuff. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's why I'm doing this. Well, no, I'm doing this for me. I don't really care what you guys get out of it. <laughs> Squirrel. And you don't, like I said, you don't have to have nails to do, to do this. Um, uh, but uh, it will definitely give you tonal options. Cause I, you know, I, I've, got, I've got more tone options and, and it's going to be louder with a nail. It's like having a pick built into your finger, which is exactly what it is. It's called finger picking. Um, but anyway, so there's the pattern. And it's very classical sounding, especially when you go to the five chord, the G chord. And if you, here's the simplified G chord. I'm just going to do two finger G chord. It's kind of interesting because that's a tritone. And that, uh, just a little bit of theory, no lesson at the end of the week. <laughs> but that F on the G7 chord wants to go down to E. And this B here on the second string open, that B of the G7 chord wants to go to C. So if you look at this, right there is a little micro 5-1 uh, uh, cadence. It's called cadence resolution progression, whatever. 5-1. Okay, so you can do that anywhere on the neck. Also, I'm coming up with, uh, I, I saw a bunch of you comment on my new video that I posted yesterday. Pretty good, I already got a thousand views on it. Um, I did make it a card in my hugely popular video. Um, mm -hmm. I, the next one I'm gonna do is gonna be something where I take like a bunch of jazz chords and make some kind of musical progression out of it. And then I'm hope maybe seven, I'm thinking seven, um, I think I'm gonna call it seven exercise to help you change chords faster. But they're gonna be pretty advanced, you know, um, and I'll probably say intermediate guitarist on there. So uh, so it won't be for beginners necessarily. Uh, but the idea is to, to kind of get the fingers all working, you know, changing at the same time. Um, okay, so. Now you can insert any chord in here if you want. Like if you want A minor. You might have to move your thumb around to accommodate that chord if you're gonna do like an E7 instead of. And that's the, that's yesterday's pattern. Today's pattern is. Okay, so back to C. Go slow here. See, you can see my. I'll go in slow motion. I'm sorry. That's just stupid. <laughs> okay, I'm just messing with you all now. You're like, that's buffering. Dang it. Oh man. <laughs> I need to. I need to create some kind of like, like buffering like dance where. It, Look, look, I, I, but, I. <laughs> All right. And the, the drag for me is like, I can't hear you if you're laughing or not. But then, like, in five minutes, I get the chat, like, oh, ha ha. So, so here we go. Uh, okay, Tom, do that with chords E minor, C major, A major, C major, and then B major. Really? Let's see. Sounds like a movie score. Sounds like a uh, 
a movie score. Another thing, like a movie trick is just take a minor chord, just move it up three frets. Like. It's two different keys. It's beautiful, you know, like A minor to C minor. Oh, the, what you did, oh, the, oh, that. Oh, I know what you're saying. So basically I'm playing E minor, I'm playing this, uh, which is E minor. And then I'm going to X, X, uh, two, zero, one, zero, which is technically C over E. And then I'm going to X, X, two, zero, two, zero, which is technically a seven over E. Uh, what am I doing? Did I put Okay, E, um, and then back to the C chord. That's what I was just playing. You can also take the bass note down, it's nice too. Play it using the Phrygian dominant mode. The Phrygian dominant, uh, let's see, what would that be? An e. Is that the Phrygian dominant mode? I don't know. Well, oh, it, it, it's uh, Malaguena is kind of like that. Was it? Uh, Is that what you're thinking? Uh, so basically, I'm doing, uh, actually, you can go thumb, uh, index, middle on the bottom string. So do that. So I'm playing zero and then zero, zero. That's the first chord. <laughs> I'm the master of my own domain. <laughs> okay, then the next one is, then it would be four, X, 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 zero, zero. That would be the next chord. Okay, so that's kind of a, actually this would be one of the like early pieces I might teach someone on classical guitar. And I, right now I'm going index middle, but you could totally do P, M, I, if you wanted to work on that, okay? And you could also do P, I, M, I. But I think originally it was probably more like P index middle. Top two strings only, both open on the uh, on with the right hand. So it's pretty simple. And then that would be the second chord. So nothing there, but then two, and then nothing, nothing, boom, boom. That's the third chord. So the first chord or a chord really, what it is is it's just a bass line. I'm playing E, G sharp, B. So open, fourth, and then second fret of the fifth string and do that twice. E, G sharp, B, E, G sharp, B. And then it's just kind of an A and then a backward C scale. All the way down to F. So be A, the fifth string open, then the third fret, second fret, open, third fret on the bottom string, first fret, open. Maybe I'll write that. I could even write it out in music notation so you could practice reading your music notation. But it's basically, basically get the bass line down and then, then add the top part to it.
I'm sure I saw Jim Stafford do Malaguena, but I can't remember what he did. I'll check it out later. Um, okay, so yeah, it's very, very Spanish sounding. It basically is E7 to A minor is kind of what's happening. Or E7 e to F major. You could also think of it. My hand's caught. All right. At least I'm not referring at all. But <laughs> I used to do that to sound men. I would be ch check one, two. I think Mike is in and out. I'm not sure if it's working. The cable is back. I would do that. And that's just mean. But the sound man always knew I was joking because he knew me. Okay. All right. So that's the one new pattern. Now we're going to have um, the pattern where I'm going to show you the pattern where we're going to use all uh, three of our fingers, main fingers. Rarely, rarely, I don't think I've ever used my pinky in a classical guitar piece as a picking thing. For flamenco, yes. In fact, for a lot of the rasqueados, um, uh, shoot, um, I can't do it right now. My hand is just, what, what is it? A pinky is very, very uh, much used in rasqueados. But for finger picking, we don't really use the pinky. So we're, we're going to, if you want, you can just go ahead and put the, the fifth string, um, the thumb on the fifth string and pluck that open. We're not, I won't even do a chord over here. And uh, see, that, nah, not better. You can see I'm wearing pants. <laughs> pants confirmed. Um, so we have basically plucked the fifth string with your thumb. And then now your first finger, instead of getting the second string, is going to be assigned to the third string. Okay. There is no rule that any, I can use my first finger on the, on the fifth string if I want. I mean, you know, for as far as fingers being assigned to strings, you, you may need to use your second finger on the second, third string or whatever, you know, it, it just depends on the pattern. So, but in this pattern, we're going to be thumb on the fifth string and then we're going to play uh, index finger on the G string the middle finger on the B string and the ring finger on the E string. Okay, and then we're gonna, we're only gonna be bopping in between two, two chords at this point, two strings on the bass. So we're gonna go. Ultimately, that's, but on a C chord. Okay, thank you, Kathy. Um, you know, DK, I think Kathy is working with the Mel Bay book I saw. Um, as far as that goes, I did a I did a video on that, right? Let me find that video real quick. Um, well, I just talk about you can teach yourself how to read music if you just in your spare time, just by using these basic books that were intended for children. It's kind of a great way. It's kind of like when you learn a foreign language, you often will. One of the best ways to do it is to start with baby books, you know, little kids books and start to learn the basics. Um, it's not conversational, but it will teach you the same way that a baby learn a kid learned the language. So let me go to my YouTube. Uh, oh, you know what? It's, it's long since buried. I'll put the, um, just for um, reference, here's the, here's the Discord invite. You guys, this is an invite, so click on that. And you can get into the Discord chat room afterwards. Um, everybody here is pretty much over there now, um, and sometimes before too. So, And I'll be on there occasionally as well. And I may post um, like uh, uh, PDFs of our lessons up there. I did that yesterday, so. They're all, all the so far all of the fingerstyle lesson PDFs are up on the Discord site. It doesn't cost anything to be part of. Um, let's see. So I need to find uh, where would that be? It was fairly recent, right? Um, starting find listening. Tips are playing slide. Are all band names taken? Boom. Boy, how long ago did I do that one? Tips for reading music, get started. Okay, here it is. Wow, that's a short video. That's unlike me. 
<laughs> get shareable link. Oh, okay. That was easy. All right. So I think this is the link for that video. Um, yeah, I, Alfred's is what I started on. Um, and that's usually what I used with kids. It, the, the downside to Alfred's um, is that it's, and, and Mel Bay both is, you know, you're going to be playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, Mary Had a Little Lamb and stuff like that. And it's a little bit, uh, it's a little pedestrian. Um, it's not very applicable, but you are, it is progressive. So like you start out like with Alfred, you start out learning the first three notes on the E string, E, F, and G. Um, and then you learn the B string. You know, then you do a couple songs, not really any song, real song. They just make up songs just to force you to learn to, to learn to read and mix it up a little bit. And then they teach you the B string. And then I think by, by then, once you have two strings, they can actually start to play melodies because you've got, you've got six notes there. Um, technically more if you're talking chromatically, but they're just talking about the, the uh, notes in diatonic C. So, so Alfred's uh, basic method, you know, is not, is not bad. And Mel Bay's, both of those are kind of the same thing. I would use both of those when I taught uh, later, when I taught kids, it was a great way to teach kids. I've even had known teachers that they, as long as you're like five pages ahead of the kid, you can teach it yourself, you know? So if you get some kid that wants to learn how to read, you know, play guitar and they're really like seven, eight years old, they don't really, seven, eight year olds typically didn't have, uh, when I was teaching, didn't really have a taste of music. Like they were like, Oh, I got to learn Jimi Hendrix. Or I got to learn Zeppelin or I've got to learn, you know, 30 seconds of Mars or whatever. And um, so they, you, you, you were really at a, at a disadvantage. You really had to have a hunt for material and give them things to practice. And so that's why the books were so good. Cause it was just like, okay, here's a routine. Let's try to get to the end of this book. And if the kids stuck with you to the end of the book, then by the end of the book, they were actually pretty decent. A lot of times I would get the end of book one on uh, Alfred's, and I should talk while I, I should write out this new this new arpeggio um, while we and arpeggio is just the classical term for finger picking pattern. OK, so if you hear me use the term arpeggio, that's all that means. Um, but I would use <coughs> excuse me, I would use the um, uh, the Alfreds as kind of oops, this is two. I need one. Um, I would use the Alfreds and uh, as kind of an intro into the Carcassi method. If they really showed interest in learning to read music and they. You know, I would show them a couple classical guitar pieces, and if they really like that, then I would start them on the Carcassi method, which there are so many versions of that because it's public domain. Uh, you, you know, Pepper and I could could print up a version of our own of Carcassi method, um, <clears throat> but uh, it's so the problem with it is it's, it's tough to find a really good version that kind of takes it slow. Uh, some of them jump right in and it's, it's pretty tough, like almost assumes that you can already read. And um, so that, that can be a little bit annoying. Uh, but there are some Carcassi methods uh, that I feel like are start out pretty simple and then, then, you know, get more and more, you know, by nature, uh, the book progresses. So if you go right to the end of the book, it's going to be ha much harder than the beginning of the book. And that's true with um, Mel Bay's, method and the uh, Alfred's basic guitar method. I got to stack these a little tighter here. Okay. So here's what that pattern looks like, the P-I-M-A. And we're just bouncing back and forth on the thumb between the fifth string and the fourth string. Again, we have 16th notes. So there's two lines on top, two bars. They're called bars. And it looks pretty because it's like this sloping. It, and, and that's the beauty of, I love that about music. It looks like it sounds. So you could see where you could get to a point where you could glance that at that and play it. It's like, you know, it's just music. Tab isn't doesn't really work that way for me. And, and I've written a lot of music and, you know, for students out in tab. Anybody, any of my students that wanted to learn rock and they didn't weren't interested, in, they were older, you know, high school, junior high, whatever. They wanted to right away to learn songs. So I'm, I was just teaching them tab. I would have to teach them the basics of tab. But there's the C chord. So there's the C chord, what it looks like. And then this is just thumb. Oh, I should write that. P-I-M-A. Thumb, index, middle, ring. And you just keep doing that. And those are 16th notes that we could be, you can see where the, the down stems are those are the downbeats one two three four one e and uh, two e and uh, three e and uh, four e and uh, follow the dance the bouncing 
finger. <laughs> okay. And so now I'm going to do the same thing for the G's. I'm going to go ahead and write it down here so I have a little more space. Okay. Like I needed your permission. Oh, I'm getting questions, aren't I? Uh, DK, let's see. Oh, stop. From Gary. Oh, sorry, sorry. Gary, what was the question? Oh, have you ever had tendonitis in your right elbow? Um, yes. Uh, and um, I have had tendonitis, uh, but not... Well... Is that the same as tennis elbow? I've had tennis elbow and literally from tennis. I play tennis and I was Alex and I were playing one day and I I tend to like to put a lot of top spin and I was I was on my forehand and I whipped my forehand around and I, it snapped and I immediately knew what I did. And he hit the ball back and I just kept playing for like, well, literally one hit. I hit the racket. I mean, I hit the ball with a racket and it was like an electrical shockwave up my arm and I couldn't even hold on to the racket. I mean, it was, it was so bad. Uh, so I actually had to go for, I went for some physical therapy just to see if they could, they could get it any better. And I learned some tricks. Um, so I'm not sure is tendonitis the same as, uh, as tennis elbow. That's my question. Okay. So here's my next. Hey, Julian, are you out there? Julian was saying he's been enjoying my friend, Julian, very good young guitar player. I really feel bad for a lot of these young guitar players here in town because so many have made all of their income from playing live and that's completely dried up. Um, but Julian is, uh, okay. Sorry. David is right up there. Let's see. Did I get it? Pepper. Oh, yeah, right. Demonetize. Oh, yeah. I don't. I think I'll be okay. Well, we'll see what happens. I can clip that part out. <laughs> so if I have to, YouTube makes it easy if there's an offending section. I still haven't heard about that. Me playing that 500 year old public domain piece that somebody claims is theirs and it's not. And I understood if I were to play their version, it was a library company in LA. If I was to play their version behind me while I was teaching, Okay, I can see you where you could make some claim because I'm using your guitar player to underscore my music. But I was actually the guitar player playing a public domain piece, so I disputed it. Um, oh, you have them all. <laughs> you ju just a chain of islands. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Jackie, uh, no, let's see. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to write out the G7. Um, oops, uh, sorry. Tendonitis can be anywhere in the body. Okay, tennis elbow is tendonitis on the right lateral. Yeah, right here. I mean, it's it's very very specific. You can I can push it and feel it. Um, right now it's fine, but it, it, the older I get, the longer it takes. I've had it before, um, and the longer it takes, like usually it would get better in a couple months, but this was over a year it took before I could play tennis again. And I am not playing very much right now. I need to. In fact, I think Alex has my tennis rackets. Okay, I'm trying to go slow here because I really don't want to start over again. So I'm writing out this new pattern, again, that uses all three fingers in your thumb. Thumb, index, middle, and ring. P-I-M-A is the symbols we use that have their origins in Spanish because... Spanish guitar is kind of the origin of much classical guitar music is Spanish. So much beautiful music written. So many great composers. I, I love Villalobos is one of my favorites. Uh, Torega, you know, Giuliani wrote some great pieces. He's Italian. Um, so again, 16th notes, P, I, M, A. Okay, get ready to do a screenshot. Although I will try to scan the, these today. <laughs> As sloppy as that one is. And here's the new pattern. So we have two new patterns today. This is that one I was just playing and, and we can practice this together. This one, I, this is the first one we've done that uses all three fingers. I think this light is helping. Check this out. That's crazy, right? But I think it is helping. 
helping to see if it doesn't fall over. Oh man, now I, I should never have picked it up. It was perfect. Now it's gonna fall. All right. So, um, C chord, thumb, index on the third string, middle on the second string, and ring finger on the first string. So let's just stay, let's not move the thumb at all. Let's stay on the fifth string. One E and uh, one E and. Yeah, I'm, I'm glowy. To, to the different bass strings, the uh, fifth string, fourth string. Now, in the Carcassi method, they actually move the bass note around. Check this out. This is what the Car I mean, uh, sorry, the Carcassi uh, version of this is. Oh wait, let me look at it. That doesn't sound right. Oh no, it just changes on the G. So it does that. It adds that low G string. I mean, the low, the low G note on the on the E string. But don't worry, we're not going to do that. We're just going to stick with the or almost looks like I'm flipping you off. Yeah. Now, when you, a lot of times I'll be playing um, uh, for uh, you, you want instead of a, a what's called a block chord. This is called a block chord when you play all the notes at once. Technically, that that pattern we did that was the first Carcassi pattern, but I didn't teach it to you until like the fifth one or fourth one. These are little block chords because they're all like in a stack. Okay, this is a block chord. Um, but a lot of times you'll see a block chord written and then there'll be a little squiggly line along the side. And what that means is to roll it. And rolling a block chord sounds like this, right? You've heard that. You can even do a long roll like that. You wouldn't want to write it out. In fact, it's funny because when I when I get MIDI from composers and they want the guitars to roll like that, when I first look at the MIDI, it's like, uh, you know, it's, it could be a, a a triplet sixteenth note and another triplet sixteenth and another triplet another triplet sixteenth note and then a, a quarter note or a, a, a sixteenth note and another sixteenth note and then they're all tied to these. It's just a complete mess. Um, so what I do is I quantize it so they all fall on the downbeat and they just looks like this. But I know that the composer wants me to roll it. So rolling can be easily done by kind of, it's almost like doing this pattern fast. I kind of do it by peeling my fingers off like that. Kind of just roll your hand like this and let the fingers kind of fall off naturally. And that's how, that's a good way to create a roll. Okay, so now that we have a pattern that utilizes the um, the three fingers, we, we'll, that'll open up a whole bunch of patterns. And you know, like I've said, the Giuliani book, and I'm putting the the link to uh, Amazon to buy the the Giuliani book, and uh, because I think it was Pepper that wanted the um, Segovia scales, that's also there. Um, but uh, you can see. How many, 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 many patterns we have. Look how old this is. Look how yellow it is. Just from this is from college days. Look at look at these patterns. And there's some really, really beautiful, very usable ones. And then there's some that feel more like exercises that are more, I don't know, um, uh, academic feeling. 
there are some that have a lot of bass movement around too, which is good. And then there's some that are a lot of block chords where you're going, you know, this dun 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 kind of thing. And that's those are really good. You 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 find things like this in music, it's pretty common. So it's why he Giuliani just wanted to give you as many options as possible. Here's kind of here's one that's like an up, you can see without even knowing how to read music, you can see what that's gonna sound like. It just looks like it sounds. That's what's so great about music notation versus tab. And I can do both. So most of these we're, we're not going to use. I'm just going to do the best of. And the ones that I feel apply the most to uh, finger style guitar um, or for playing songs that are already, you know, kind of out there. Uh, but there are definitely some of these that are most of these we're not even going to touch on. Um, I just want to show you ones that are you know, that are very usable and particularly ones that work well in 4-4. Now, see, here's one that's interesting. Um, it's the thumb plays two strings in a row. Uh, which sounds very piano-like. That pattern is a very piano-like pattern, so. All right. Oh, that's right. Okay, that's great. Awesome. The Giuliani link is to uh, to, in, it's in Discord as well. Okay, good. Um, yeah. So let's see what else are we doing. I'm going to turn this light off because it's it's just in my face. Hey, look, I'm <laughs> I'm uh, Iron Man. Okay, it's annoying. They, can you see this color change? No. That just looks brighter and darker. It's so weird. Here it looks like kind of yellow and goes from like, well, th oh, that's the one. Yeah, you can definitely see the color change there. Anyway, that's annoying. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, players like Jeff Beck. Yeah, Jeff Beck pretty much plays with his fingers all the time. That's right. I forgot that. But, and and uh, so does, uh, well, Lindsey Buckingham and... Um, uh, Mark Knopfler, um, and maybe, uh, who's the guy, mm, he's a great guitar player, he played in an Irish group for years, and then he's been, uh, Richard Thompson, I think Richard Thompson may play with his fingers too, I played one of his guitars once at, uh, when I bought my Martin, my old Martin, I, it was, they had it at the store for repairs, and they let me play it, <laughs> his main guitar, he had a really nice loud one that he played. Okay, so am I missing any questions here? ATA, ask, oh, ask them anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ask you something. Well, I asked for recommendations on Netflix. If you've got them, we need coronavirus uh, quarantine recommendations for stuff we've already seen. I've, you know, Netflix, Disney Plus. Alex bought it and gave us the code, so we have it on our, on our TV. But the only thing I watched on Disney Plus was The Mandalorian which was okay. I think the first episode was probably the best episode. After that, it was, eh, I don't know. I'm I'm not big. I mean, I've seen all the Star Wars movies. Of course, I have a place in my heart for the first three. Um, yeah, I already know way too much about you guys. Yeah, exactly. I, I would, I, Disney Plus is cheap and I own stock in Disney. <laughs> I told you the other day, I, I wish I hadn't done this, but I, I'm, I sold half of my stake in Netflix and bought Disney when Disney Plus came out. And I should just kept Dis I should have just kept my Netflix. But hindsight's 2020. That's you can't say 2020 anymore without just rolling your eyes. Uh, but I I think Disney Plus is only six nine. If you're a big Simpsons fan, it's great because it has all of the Simpson seasons on it. Um, and it's got all the Disney, like all the Disney movies. If you got kids, if we had kids or if we had grandkids, if our kids were little. I think Disney Plus would totally be worth it. If you have grandkids, I think it's probably worth it. But we're not in either one of those places anymore. So we just have it through relation. Leo Kotke is a great guitar player. I see that, Hope Jay. I mean, Hook, hook Jay. Um, let's see. Oh, Mark Offler uses a thumb pick. Okay. Um, let's see. Leo Kotke, does he, doesn't he use finger picks? I'm not sure. Uh, I have never seen him play. Um... Ben Woods. Oh, Ben Woods is a good flamenco Spanish guitar. A brand or artist? Uh, Annie McKee is really good. Dan Ro Don Ross, yep. Michael Hedges, of course, um, um, unbelievable. John Faye is great. 
Um, there's so many great, I'm not, you know, I don't even have an aspiration to be, to do that. I like writing finger and, and playing finger style stuff. I've got a few pieces out there. Um, I think, I mean, I, I'm more interested in writing stuff that's like for TV or something that can be used and I can generate revenue from. It sounds really greedy of me, but that's generally what I do for a living. So, um, yep. J John Butler. I, I'm familiar with that name too. Uh, mountain, mountain monsters. Hmm. Tommy Emanuel, of course. I've seen Tommy live. I've seen a couple guys live. Uh, and Tommy, yeah. Oh, okay. That's interesting. So his calluses are so hard that they have a nail, a nail sound to it. I, I'm not, sh I'm not shocked because when you, he flies so much that I just being in a plane dries up my nails. And when I'm flying a lot, um, that my nails get really dry and crack easy. It's really, really hard to, uh, Anime is where it's at, Verdi. <laughs> I haven't written any music for anime. Although there's some great music in anime. Some really good composers that have written music and gotten their start in anime. The Kitchen, a movie I've seen this past week. Hood movie language, though. Okay, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Like I said, we watched two movies. Uh, kind of Well, one I knew was going to be pretty good called The Upside. Very good. And um, D David pointed out that that's a remake of a French film. Um, so I'm now I'm on a hunt for the French film that's a remake of. Um, and then um, we watched Game Night, which we we were just scrolling through the TV and it was on one of the channels. And um, we I watched like two minutes of it. And I was literally laughing out loud. It was like so funny. I'm like, OK, so I'm going to have to pull this up. And so it was on on demand. So we just got to watch it with just a co commercial every, you know, 30 minutes or something. It wasn't bad. Oh, Mike Dawes. Yeah, he's a great guitar player, too. Um, Let's see. Billy Strings. I, there's so many players. There's little kids that can blow me away. On the Instagram, it's amazing some of the stuff that they can do. I, uh, you know, I and, and again, that's the, those, those players, oftentimes, that's what they do all day long. They do one style of music, and they're working on it and working on it, like the, the hitting and playing the drums and keeping the beats and doing the bass and getting everything going. Just a whole other level. But I think I've only been once asked to do that kind of thing for a session. And it was in a, in a context where I could actually take my time and get some, a, an idea down. Like they gave me some vague music and they went, can you do that kind of thing with this? And I'm like, I'll try. And it was for a scene in a movie. I don't remember what the movie was. It, it wasn't anything big. I may never even come out. I'm not sure. But um, I, uh, I managed to, you know, within 15 minutes, come up with something that was good enough for the scene. So it wasn't amazing, but uh, let's see. Intouchables. Uh, Intouchables. Is that an Indian movie? I'm wondering. That would be The Untouchables. That would also be a, another movie. I see. Uh, Dennis. Where's Dennis? Oh. No, Dennis, I haven't. Uh, um, I haven't seen what you posted, I don't think, on your my. I'll have to check. Oh, you're going, you're going to bed? Oh, no, DK is going to sleep. It's all right. We're done. We're done with the lesson. Tomorrow, we're going to review all the all of the the um, patterns we've done so far. That's all we're going to, you know. So tomorrow will just be a, hopefully a chance where I'll play slow enough so you can play along with me. So this was the last one we just learned. Here's probably, I'll start with this one, the block chords. You can just kind of get your fingers wrapped around the strings you're supposed to use. You know, and then we do this one is a new one we learned today that I wrote poorly. And these are these are all up on the Discord. Um, and then this is the kind of the grade school thing you learn. So we'll um, we'll go over these patterns um, tomorrow. And, and Diane's probably going story time. <laughs> I'm like I kind of started with a story. I don't know, do I have a story? I'm I don't ever like plan a story. It's always just I'm talking about something. Oh, I, I oh I've set this up. This is what I use to do the guitar hammer thing, and this is what I sent to the guy in Indiana or Illinois to ma to manufacture the stainless steel and then a rubber handle. And I really even like the fact that there's a ball end on there because you can actually with this you can actually tap out individual strings. Um, and he told me something like like eight dollars a piece for one hundred or something like that. I'm just going, and then this one. My friend got this sent from China, from a, a place in China, and they, they would do these for 15 cents. Now, this really wasn't going to cut it. 
I it, it was fine. It wasn't bad. But 15 cents versus $8, I'm like, now I know why all the manufacturing goes to China. But who knows who's, you know, kids are making them. Uh, but yeah, I'll grab the... Grab the Martin. Oh, I'm still in double drop D. Change guitars, so we have to. Hey, was that on the list? I did. Yeah, change guitars was on the list. The other one was if I mentioned that I played all the guitars on <laughs> on uh, Apex Legend. So I didn't see that. Uh, so this is double drop D. So if I go to. Just hitting the strings with a with a um what was I, I bought a triangle um you know like a orchestral triangle and it came with a mallet i wanted a mallet so i had to buy the triangle to get the mallet but the cool thing about it was as soon as i got it i went oh cool rubber sounds like the same thing almost in the other room I mean, the great thing about one of the great things about that gab is you got three D strings. So whatever you do on this low string, you can do on the the fourth string, and you can do on the on the first string. It's basically an E sus chord. Uh, so if you want to resolve it, you put your put a finger on the the fourth fret of the fourth string, and you get a D or an F sharp, oh, but I have to get rid of the G. If I want, if I don't put anything down here, I get, I got a D4 chord. So it's a D chord with a G in it. Uh, but I can put the third on top. If I, again, I, I like to get rid of the G string. And there's a G chord, uh, there's a D chord major. Or I can make it D minor. There's no, there's no other third in there, so. Also, I have two A strings, so anything I do on the A string, on one A string, if it works on that, it'll the same fret will work on the other A string. A wire hanger probably wouldn't be heavy enough. Um, I mean, as a kid, I used you know pencils and pens and everything. I just like the sound of the stainless steel. Really sounds really good. I'm just kind of, I'm like forcing it to hit multiple times. Let me get that. But 
then with the rubber handle, with the other side, it's like a rubber. It's quieter. Okay, Bruce question. Oh, sorry. Oh, we got multiple here. Uh, from Russ. Oh, is that Bruce? Oh, no, Russ, sorry. Could you recommend a good starting guitar? Looking for a Fender season? Uh, you know, I don't, acoustic guitars, I don't really, oh, hey, there we Russ. Okay, yes, you can, uh, wait a minute. Let me go all the way back up here. Where, where did you start your, uh, yes, you can just like learning the guitar, pluck a note and listen to it, make the same sound to help when you listen up. Let's see, uh, just watch your, <laughs> yeah, from 2000. It's funny, because I think I say in that video too, the seven tips for older beginners that I have like 7,000 subscribers. Now I've got 72,000. Um, yeah, that's a lot. A lot of, he, uh, he's saying how high the action is on a good. Yeah, that makes it really hard to play. Um, if your if your neck is warped or if the bridge is coming up, it'll the strings will get w really far away. So he's getting a new guitar. Could you recommend a good starting guitar? Looking at, I would go to someplace like Sweetwater, and then put in your parameters. What you know, acoustic guitar under two hundred dollars or under three hundred dollars. And look at the reviews, uh, particularly a guitar on Sweetwater that has, like, if it has 50 four and a half star or better reviews, um, I would say you're fairly safe with something like that. And you don't have to buy it from Sweetwater at that point. Uh, you may want to go see it in person, which, of course, music stores are closed right now. But Sweetwater is order is taking orders and delivering. I just got a new mic stand from them uh, this week. Um, so um, I would do that because... Where everyone knows that I'm really into cheap electrics and I have a lot of cheap Squire electrics, but I'm not buying them for the playability or buying them for the for playing them live or taking them to sessions necessarily. I'm buying them as I'm using them as instruments that I can really change things like put weird strings on or change the tunings and have, you know, weird, weird things done to them so that I can create new sounds that maybe didn't exist before. So that's why I like cheap guitars. I don't really keep up on where the best reviews are. And you could probably find some YouTubers that do really good reviews of cheap instruments. I don't know if any of you have any suggestions on that. Um, but the, um, the you, you just have to make sure they're not being paid to uh, to to give that advice. Um, any Anytime I do, you know, like I, I've talked about Elixir Strings and I, I they don't pay me. They give me a box of strings for free every year. Um, and I always forget to order them, so I don't usually get them. <laughs> so not lately anyway, but I got so many boxes now, strings, I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't need any more right now. But um, uh, so I, you know, I I always preface that whenever I talk about Elixir Strings that, hey, you know, I, I, they, I, I do quote unquote endorse them. My name is on their website somewhere, you know. So I um, mean, they and they tweet me every now and then or will book, promote something. But but yeah, I would look I would go to Sweetwater.com and um I mean, I can even pull it up for you and see what, what's there. Uh, Sweetwater. And then I, you just go, you know, you select a category, good guitars, acoustic guitars, and then you just click the box. It's like, let's say you're looking for something really cheap. At, cheap. Um, let's see, where's the price? Shop by category. Okay, six string acoustics. Let's keep it that. Uh, you wanted one with a pickup in it. So let's say acoustic electric. Um, they even have left-handed. Um, okay. And then you can select your brand, but I'm, I'm going to say, let's just say from the 200 to $300 price range, they have 42 guitars that they review. Okay. And then I'm looking, I'm, you can even sort, this is true of any buying website. Uh, let's see, price, customer rating, sort by customer rating. And um, we'll see if anybody has any good. I mean, here's one with eight reviews and five stars. Not not a whole lot of reviews on these. Not as many as you would find on, say, um, uh, Amazon. Amazon, you would find a lot more ratings on it. Uh, but here's an Ibanez acoustic for two twenty nine. That's got five, five uh, eight five star reviews. Um, and you can read the reviews and kind of get to know things that way. Uh, let me just I'll copy and paste this into there. So hopefully that answers a little bit of a question there. Um, okay, two-part question from Alex. Oh, how far up was that? I went. Oh, I'm sorry, Russ. Okay, there's Russ. Uh, Alex. Uh, if so, any favorites? Oh, do you have any penchant for alternate tunes? Yeah, well, Alex, a lot of my, 
high, most popular videos are open tuning videos. In fact, I have a whole playlist of open tunings. Um, so you can, uh, let's see, I have 15 videos that talk about open tunings. Um, everything from just finding chords. And that's actually my first YouTube video was about open tunings, believe it or not. And I'm not a big open tuning player. Uh, I love playing open tunings for slide sometimes, but I still like playing in standard tuning uh, for slide. I've got a video on that as well. Um, but uh, so Alex, the uh, dad gad is definitely one of my favorites. Um, I, I've got even a video up there where I try open C for the first time. And so that's pretty funny because I'm like, uh, I've never heard, uh, I've never messed with open C. So I'm just kind of experimenting. And, and that's kind of, that's the thing I like about open tunings. Um, and I just wrote a song for a pop, uh, pop artist uh, who will be unnamed. Um, two days ago and he loved it. And then he came back to me and goes, cause I did double drop D. So I did D A D G B D. I mean, I like double drop D because in fact, no, oh, I had my SG tune that way, but um, I'm going to touch my face so we can all take a sip. I'm getting thirsty. We have a drinking game and it has rules. Um, these are the rules. Although I think there's one more um, oh, copy. Um, and, uh, the first video I did was for my brother-in-law and it wasn't for YouTube necessarily, but it was the best way to send it to him. My brother-in-law played in open D a lot. And he said, Hey, how do I play like a C chord or how do I play like an E minor chord in open D? And I'm like, I don't know. So I just tuned, tuned the guitar open D and I started finding all the chords and I wrote all the shapes down and I did a video for him on YouTube and I sent it to him. And then I started doing videos um, and I said, oh, I should make that one public. So I made it public. But in the video, I'm like, going, so, Jeff, here's what you want to do. And then Jeff, do this and then Jeff, do that. And so I reshot the video uh, <laughs> in, in more of a generic term. Um, so let's see. Um, so, yeah, so I, I do I do have some stuff. Oh, did I did I post that playlist? Yeah, I did. OK, good. Um, all right. So from Bruce, so we got Russ, two part question from Alex up there. Um, from Bruce, oh, how about a hollow tube instead of a solid rod? Um, yeah, that might work. I have, let's see, I do have something that maybe that I can use like that here. So this is a, uh, I probably used this before. This is a copper, some copper pipe. So let's see what that sounds like. I mean, the thing is, with a compressor on, it's going to catch most of the most of the impact. The problem is, this is not going to ring on its own because I'm holding it. Like when you buy a triangle, it comes with a little leather, like strap that wraps around it. So when you hit the tri triangle, it can ring free. Whereas if you held it, in fact, that's how you mute it. You would mute it with your hand. So. Very, very subtle difference between something that's hollow. Hello. Where are you, camera? Oh, right there. And something that's solid. But I have all sorts of things like this that I can hit strings with or, you know, make noises with. Um, uh, the guitar player for Wilco uh, from L.A., he uses this. My son Alex bought me. We, we use screws on the electric guitar to make weird noises. I need it. Actually, I should probably get that one out to have it around because I'm always looking for something like that. Um, let's see. Oh, and so spring, like this is a, this is just a, a screw and then springs also make for kind of cool on electric guitar springs on across the strings on electric can be really, really cool. So you can see this thing is just a, a metal spring. I need to keep this out so I know I have it. There's so many things, you know, little tools like that that get packed away and you forget, you know, how can I get a cool sound that I haven't done in a while? Um, let's see. Okay. From Bruce. Okay. That did that. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. You guys are so many awesome comments here. Um, faith guitars are great. Um, yeah. I don't, I've never played a faith guitar. Taylor. Uh, yeah. I mean, Taylor, Taylor Martin, those are all, you know, Taylor Martin Gibson or, Although, you know, for a while, there were a lot of Gibsons I didn't dig. Um, they all kind of sounded the same to me, but old Gibsons were great. And then I got my 
first acoustic was a Gibson Dove, and I still have it, and it I've used it a billion times. It's great. I just got lucky because I really didn't know what I was looking for when I got my first acoustic. I actually the only my only prerequisite was that it was a loud guitar, and I probably played a hundred until I played that guitar and went, "Wow, this is loud." Um, and that was because my wife and I were leading worship in a Sunday school class of fifty couples, and they didn't have a PA system, so I wanted a guitar that I could bang out really hard. And that thing really that really took it. Yeah, the Nano Webs. Oh, you got the new Nano Webs. That's good. Um, and the the Poly Web is the original Nano Web is, and I think they even have a, a like even finer one now. Uh, Peter's taking off. Let's see. And he's buy a secondhand faith guitar. Oh, okay. Alex, you were talking about the faith guitar. Uh, yeah, and that's one of the things like T Taylor does is they kind of start with um, uh, um, they kind of start with the neck. And they want the guitar to be very playable. And I'm not, I mean, technically, I guess I'm a Taylor artist. I don't think I'm on any of their websites or anything like that. But there was a time where I taught clinics for them. But that was one of the things you could pick up any Taylor and you knew it was going to play good. Um, you might pick up an old Martin and you might go, wow, this action is particularly the Martin 12 strings were horrible to play. I never picked up one that I ever liked. But the, the I have a 12 string and it's a Taylor and I it's just so easy to play is for a 12 string. It actually plays easier than some six strings. So um yeah no cheap cheap doesn't playability uh that's that's one of the things where that's actually costs money um but you, you know getting a guitar so having a cheap guitar is better than having no guitar so if it's a matter of like well like i'm not you know i think i've made this point before with guitars is that if, if your goal is to have this you know 3500 hundred dollar martin but it's going to take you seven years to save up for it <laughs> you know you're going to have to have 15 garage sales to buy it uh, no, get get a two hundred dollar guitar, get it in your hands, and start playing. I mean, uh, that's really more important than waiting for the perfect guitar. Just get something, um, and then if you have to, you can take it to a guitar tech in your area. Now it may cost you a minute or cost you a, a, you know a few bucks. Um, like a setup is typically about eighty five bucks or something like that, and they can lower the action and put new strings on it and intonate it, and make sure it's all pretty cool. So. Um, uh, so that's a, that's a piece of, so you, you can, if you've got, like, I've got a really good guitar tech, so I can buy anything with confidence and know that he can fix pretty much anything I can throw at him. Um, uh, and so that, that helps a little bit with buying used instruments. Uh, sorry, I'm kind of taking just a few more questions here. Um, oh, okay. Sam Ashton Guitar Center may have more reviews. You're probably right. You can go there and, uh, and they're probably still selling online. I guarantee you they are. Um, Let's see. Sip, Tom rules. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my 12 string, actually 11. <laughs> oh, it's two to open for Ocean. Oh, the song, what, what Ocean, is that a song, Alex? Um, yeah, you probably broke the, the high G string. And that's, yeah, that's the, I think that's the C tuning, the, uh, the, the C tuning that I did the video of. Um, well, uh, Chris, uh, technically, yeah. Uh, Chris is asking, when you change your tuning, is intonation adjustment required? On acoustic guitar, that's not really possible because uh, there's no there's no um, adjustment except for maybe some cheaper acoustics might have some adjustment screws or some older ones. But you can't really adjust the intonation on acoustic, not easily. Um, if you were to leave a guitar permanently tuned to open D or something like that or dad dad, uh, then, then you might take it to your, your tech and then he can... Kind of file uh, the nut on the guitar to kind of shape it so it gives you a little bit more, you know, proper intonation. Uh, but I'm not really had too much problem with intonation on open tunes unless I've gone really low um, on them. Like this open C was a little hard to play in tune, to be honest. Uh, even my baritone, which was designed to be a baritone, my baritone, my Martin, um, that one, the, the hop, the second string from the top. Uh, is is very pitchy because it really probably should be a wound string, but they use an un unwound string for it. And so it's just too loose. And you go push on the first fret and you go sharp. So, um, but on electric guitar, if you're going to, it's easy to change the intonation on electric guitar. Um, anybody can do that. All you need is a tuner. Um, let's see. Uh, pan pants glug. No, pant Gary. No, Gary. Me wearing pants is not a drinking. One of the drink, it can't be. Cause I'm always wearing pants. It's like forgetting to turn on this light, you know, that's, that's a freebie, but take a sip. Anyway, I got my water here and a big jug of water. I got this at a 
hospital up. We did, I did a, um, at Sutter Health up in Sacramento, I did a, a I, did, I went to the children's hospital, did uh, with Kelly and we did little, um, little, like went into different kids' rooms and did concerts for them. And we had to wear like full, like the full suit. It was really hard to play guitar with, you know, I can play, I've played guitar with, <laughs> with mittens on, so. I, I remember one time I was playing at a, um, uh, a, a frat party outside in like October and it was probably 20 degrees out in Indiana. It was at, it was at I remember it was at, um, at Purdue University and I, I went back to my car and got my gloves and I wore, I wore my gloves the whole night. <laughs> my solos weren't very good, but rhythm wise, I could kind of get away with it. And they were like big bulky gloves. They weren't even like, you know, like they weren't like racing car driver gloves or anything like that. They weren't leather. They were like suede with fur on the inside. They were awful, but I was dying. My fingers were so cold. Um, okay. So Dennis, what did you say? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to catch up on some of the question from Chris. Oh, did I miss? Oh, Chris. Chris has a question. Ah, Chris. Oh, that. Okay. Yeah, I got that. I just got that one. Okay. Um, yeah. I uh, read the, 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 the guitar hangers I use, I think are uh, here. I can send you a link, an Amazon link. Um, that way, if you buy them, I got to get some more because I'm going to put more over here. I think um, let's see. I think they're called off the wall hangers. I really like them because they're really, really solid. They have three screws are very well made and you have, the only thing you have to do. Oh, look at this. Amazon doesn't have them. What? That's crazy. Amazon does not have them. I think they are at Sweetwater though. Let me see. Uh, let's see, go back to Sweetwater, sorry. Let's all watch Tom surf the web. <laughs> this is so exciting. Uh, but you know, they do this in the movies now. You ever notice like in TV shows and stuff like they just don't have enough dialogue or they don't have enough. So they show someone like surfing the web. I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta solve this murder. I'm gonna go to Google and Google this guy's name and I've solved the murder. Uh, let's see, what am I looking for? Off the wall. If Sweetwater has them. I don't need to make money off them. No. Where are they? Okay, now I'm just going to go straight to Google and try it. Off the wall guitar hangers. Where did I buy them? I, I, I mean, I, th I usually, yeah, here they are. Off the wall guitar center has them. Hmm. And that link is colored. That tells me I went. That's probably where I went. So, uh, here's the hangers that I'm using, and like I said, I really like them. They're a little bit more expensive. Um, no. Uh, and again, you're going to have to make sure you get the right size. Uh, basically there's two sizes. Oh, Kathy has a question. Okay. That's a big URL, but anyway, that's, let me, let me just check this URL, Kathy. I'll come back to you. Yeah. So there's two sizes. Um, you need one that's going to be a little wider for like that five string bass has a wider one. And if it's, you're going to be hanging a classical guitar, you need the wider one. So I think they come in two sizes. I'm not sure you can look that up. And, and then Kathy has a question. And question from Chris. Okay, wait. Uh, let's see. I have a question. Oh, dang it. There we go. Kathy has a question. I asked a few times, but you've never seen it. Here it goes. Is there a song that was the hardest for you to learn that you gave up or almost gave up on? Oh, I think there are probably seven or 8,000 that I can think of. I could probably name 10,000 songs that I gave up on. A lot of classical pieces that I tried to get down and I just, classical stuff is so hard. Um, I used to play at a restaurant and what I would do is like, there's a there's a piece by that, that's been arranged, I think by Segovia, by Bach, it's called uh, Chacon, C-H-A-C-O-N-N-E. And I love it. It's a beautiful piece. It's drop D tuning, beautiful piece by Bach. And I, it's 11 pages and it's like almost solid <laughs> 16th notes, 32nd note, triplet. It's, it's, it's insanity. It's so hard. Now I would sit in a restaurant uh, in Pasadena at lunch and I would play it, but I would play it at about one quarter tempo. So if the tempo is supposed to be like 
200, I would play it at 50. And they wouldn't know because at 50, even at 50, it's, the harmony on it was so beautiful. And so I did that every day uh, for <clears throat> a few weeks. And I think I probably got the tempo up to 100. But what I, it blows me away is the classical guitarists that will sit there and they will memorize that stuff. Um, there's also, somebody mentioned Michael Hedges. I tried to figure out some Michael Hedges stuff. I couldn't do it. Uh, there's Pat Metheny tunes I tried to figure out. The rock tunes even, you know, like definitely the, yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there that I try to figure out. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it, it's it's the risk reward thing, you know, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta take the risk and reward for learning a song. So yeah, the, it's, you guys all think that I'm this amazing guitar player and can, can do anything. And it's so not true. Um, it's just, you know, there's, I, I really, it's very rare to find a master of the guitar. Uh, you can find masters on piano and master violins, but guitar, it's like, yeah, Segovia is a master, was a master classical guitarist, but he couldn't play bebop at all. You know, Pat Metheny's a master jazz guitar player, but you know, can he do fingerstyle? You know, Tommy Emmanuel is a master fingerstyle player, but can he, can he shred over a rock tune? Uh, maybe, you know, there are guys like Guthrie Govan who's like really pretty good at a lot of different styles, but even his country stuff. I mean, I, I can tell you something about like Eric Johnson who's one of my favorite guitar players. He, I, I, I have a friend uh, that tried to use him on a record in way back when, way back before anybody knew his name. And they said his, he, he just wasn't make, cut out for studio work. His time wasn't very good. And his, um, uh, he couldn't read or, or in, the, in that scenario, he wasn't able to kind of come up with a good part or something like that. It was like, he can do his thing really good. And he has a lot of styles he can play in, but to do somebody else's thing, that's just not his, he never had any interest in being there. Um, so anyway, so Kathy, okay. Everybody's Kathy has a question. Kathy has a question. Kathy, there's a million people saying Kathy has a question. Did that answer your question, Kathy? Uh, Tommy would destroy a rock tune in a good way. I hope so. Uh, but he would play it his way. You know, he couldn't He couldn't necessarily shred it like Eddie Van Hillen's a freaking master. Um, but again, Eddie, and Eddie could do some classical guitar too, a little bit. But um, yeah, Aerial Boundaries is one of my favorite Michael Hedges tracks, definitely. Let me just make sure I'm not missing any other. Oh, wait, Hercules has them. Oh, Hercules. Okay. Oh, those stands. Yeah. I didn't. I don't. I don't know who Hercules is. I'm assuming that's a store. Uh, Kathy will never find out. No, Kathy, you find out now. Chris has a question. I got Chris's. Oh, do I golf? Uh, no, that's a different question from Chris. No, I mean yes and no. I have played some golf. I, you know, I we used to um... <laughs> tennis. Oh, you guys are amazing. That's hilarious. Like Kathy finally has a question. Okay. Uh, so you want to use relative minor key then? Oh, you guys are talking amongst yourselves. I see a question mark, and I think it's for me, and it's you guys talking amongst yourselves. So uh, Reed, Rick, I started to be, okay, Reed's talking to Rick, so I don't need to answer that. Uh, talking about guitar. A AB has a question. Oh, I hope he answers my question. <laughs> I'm so far behind. Where is AB's question? Oh, uh, Ocean by John Butler. That was Alex's question, or that was geared towards Alex. I have a question. How do you start a chord progression with a one, with an one minor chord? How to start a chord progression with a one? You mean like if you were to start, a, if the song was in G and you started on G minor? Uh, okay. So Kathy, yes, I got, okay. So I answered the question. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, how about a guitar progression? Slightly stupid. Oh, I don't know. Slightly stupid. I've never heard of that band. We'd like to see, we would love to see you play when we are allowed to go out again. Please let us know where you're playing. So for those of us who live in South Cal, well, I, you know, I don't play out very often. Um, and I will, I will try to promote that, but basically every weekend when church is open, uh, I was playing every weekend at church. Oh, okay. Oh, Hercules stands. Um, and um, so you were more than welcome to come to church if you're, not, you know, not afraid of walking inside a church. My dad was always afraid of walking a church, into a church <laughs> because he was afraid God was going to strike him with lightning. I'm like, do you understand? You know, church is triage for sinners. <laughs> it's full of people that think they're going to get struck by lightning. So that's the only people that belong in church are those that think they're going to get struck by lightning. Um, and uh, so I, uh, 
uh, yeah, he had, he had to come in though. Cause he had to see me lead worship. It was something that he'd never seen. And that was pretty crazy. So, um, so yeah, it, when, when that's happening again, I will definitely, I, I can, I can definitely, that's in Porter ranch. The church is in Porter ranch. So it's uh, in the Valley in the Los Angeles. Um, and you know, again, you know, one of the things that when I play at church, I really don't, my goal is not to be flashy or show off or ripping solos. Although I do usually solo for something for a prelude or something, but, um, Okay, so Abby, you're asking, so so you start on G minor. I've never, you totally could. Um, I know that uh, um, uh, one of my favorite composers, Arvo Part, um, did the Los Angeles, he we got commissioned to do a symphony with the LA Philharmonic and called the Los Angeles Symphony is what he called it. And I'm pretty sure it kind of goes back and forth between A minor and A major, kind of, he kind of morphs the two, two keys over each other. It's really beautiful. Um, I mean, I kind of did a basic analysis of it. Uh, so yeah, you could do something like that where you go G minor to G major. I mean, you could start out a song. There have been songs that have been started in a major key and go to the minor key or something like that in the chorus. Let's say I was in G minor. from the major to the minor going from the minor to the major is a little tougher to kind of sell i think but sure and you know there are no rules you write what you want to write and let someone come along afterwards and analyze why it worked you know what i'm saying uh, okay uh so that was rick uh hercules is a hanger manufacturer okay yeah i'm not, I'm not familiar with hercules but I, now that i've gotten into the off the wall and they do still make them um, I kind of like that continuity of having the same hanger. I mean, maybe if I'd started in a different room or something and I like having them individual, I don't want them all on one rack or going all the way across or going there to diagonal. I like, I mean, it's not for presentation. It's kind of for presentation for mostly it's for me, just I'm grabbing those during the day and playing them or I'm like, I'll leave one of the guitars up there. Like, Oh, I want to work on this thing or something. So, uh, let's see, who do I need to follow to teach me great metal skills? Ooh. That's a good question. I would check out, I don't know. Cause there's, there's some metal techniques that are very unique to metal, the, the, the picking thing. Um, I mean, I don't know if Guthrie Govan, if you want to, he's got some, I don't know if he does lessons per se, but he does clinics. I think this is how you spell his name. I've seen him live and he's just like, literally, literally, I mean, he's literally like, I want to sell all my gear and get psychological counseling after I see him play. You know, there are a lot of players like that. Uh, I wish I had a thousand lives. I mean, if I had a thousand lives, I'd spend one of them just doing finger style music only. And then I do blues and then I do jazz and I do, you know, all different stuff. Uh, a Paseo for Easter, Arvo Park. Yeah, Arvo Park. Oh, so good. Oh, you saw him. Oh, man, that's crazy. I'm so jealous. In fact, I, I didn't realize that. <laughs> okay. So I do all the guitar playing on uh, Apex Legends. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> um, Stephen Barton, who's the composer for who, who I'm working for, for Apex Legends, he uh, he actually worked for Arvo Part, which I, when he, I didn't know this. And he tells me this just kind of randomly when I mentioned Arvo's name. And I'm like, I, I almost couldn't talk. I was in awe. I had no idea. It's like, what? It's pretty crazy. Um, I have one symbol that stumps me, the triangle that he uses for, oh, what's the code for, tri okay. The way I get triangle on the on the on the keyboard, but I'm a Mac user, is Option or Alt J. There's a band called Alt J, and that triangle symbol is a delta. So I'm assuming what the band Alt J, which I really like that band, um, they are saying that their name is Delta. So yeah, on my key, but I don't know if that's a PC. I don't know what the PC rule is for that. Okay, all right. Um, uh, Dennis, oh, 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 good. See, Bob. Okay, so you guys are. You guys probably, somebody can help but Dennis there. Uh, let's see. Uh, autocorrect. Grr. Eller. Oh. Bob. Eller. Okay. Ellen. <laughs> autocorrect. 
Ben, <laughs> yeah, you had to type Eller in three times to get it right. Uh, link in Discord, please. Okay, yeah, because we're getting ready to sign off. Let me pull that up. Uh, rid of all these open windows. You guys, it's crazy. We are going to get to 100,000. And I say we because there's no way. I mean, this is a team effort. But it's just my, my uh, you know, it's really, um, you know, gotten about two, 3,000 new subscribers in the last 30 days. I, probably because of this. Okay, so there's the link for, at the bottom there is a link for the Discord. Um, yeah, this is a victory. And, uh, you know, I've said this before. Oh, Chris, question from Chris. Thank you, Kathy. Oh, wait, question from Gary. Did I get the Gary question, Kathy? Oh, yes, the triangle code. Okay. Uh, what make is my baritone? Well, which baritone? I have an electric baritone. I have that's a Fender Telecaster bar baritone Telecaster. So that's Fender. I have a Dan Electro baritone, um, but that one is uh, my son Alex has it. He does a lot of baritone playing. Um, and then I have a Martin baritone acoustic. And it's the prototype. It's actually the first one they made. <laughs> I've got the first one. Um, and that one is, is because I went to the NAMM show and I started asking around e every year. I would go to, you know, let's see. Okay, sip. Let's see. Uh, question from Gary. So I got that. Question from Chris. Did I get that one? Chris. Oh, what's your major baritone? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. It's for me, it's Alt J. Alt J. Or. Option J on a Mac computer, but it also says Alt there. I don't know if that'll work. See if that works on yours. If you do you have a P, if you're a PC, but you can also write for major seventh chord. You can write M A J. It's totally fine. That's that's actually probably more common nomenclature. Is that the term I want to use? Um, that's probably more common symbolism for chord for a major seventh. It's just the M A J. Some people use a capital M. So um, let's see, does not work on PC. Okay, bummer. So what's the code for PC then, David? Do you know? I mean, every now and then, cause I'm like, oh, I forget what all the codes are. I go through and I'll hit, you know, option shift and all the numbers and all the letters and go, oh, cool. There's a, oh, that's how you do that. Oh, I was wondering, like the cents, like if I were to do cents instead of dollars, I think that's, what is that? Uh, let's see, option four. Yeah, option four is sense. So you cannot do it on PC. Okay. Like, and the degree symbol, I think, was option zero. Yeah, or alt zero for degree symbols. So I can do diminished. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. That's the only thing you know how to do on a Mac. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've just always used Macs. I've never had a PC, so... Um, oh, the closest we can get is all 30, all 30. Holy cow. So that's, that'll work. That'll work. Although if it's, if that shows up, well, it would be all black. It'd be a black triangle, right? Solid, not hollow. I think, I don't know. See what that looks like. I, I don't know what that would look like. I mean, I could write one out, but I'm too lazy. <laughs> so anyway, well, listen, I'm going to sign off. Um, well, and the other thing is emojis. You might have a triangle in emojis, but that would be different. That would be on your phone. Uh, but most computers now can do emojis. Let's see. Let me make sure. Uh, oh. Oh, when you're saying the fat one, that, that one up there, that's actually a, a gypsy jazz guitar. Um, and that's, uh, that's a Del Arte. I need to put new strings on that thing. That's not the baritone. The baritone's in the closet. Uh, Let's see. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks, you guys, for watching. Thanks for giving me something to do. And I'll see you over at Discord for a minute. But I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to try to take the day off. Maybe maybe I'll probably do some practicing. But um, I'm going to go for a long walk, have some lunch, chill out. I think I got all the questions. Uh, if not, go back to, go to Discord and uh, ask me there, and I'll try to answer it there right now. Okay. Talk to you soon. God bless you guys. Bye-bye. And...